just some snippets from the students that are working on, on projects. Mark has developed a, um, a mobile uh, system that we call CityFlox, and I'll show you some screenshots in a second. Angela is working on a further theorization of the communicative ecology um, notion. Especially, she's uh, been partly funded by the government, and the government is interested in finding and um, being able to produce further evidence of how they are supposed to spend their money. So obviously in those committees I said, well, if you have $100,000 for a community portal, you should probably put some money aside and, and try and understand in a more thorough way what kind of features, what kind of interaction design features will make sense for these residents instead of just um, picking them out of the blue. And so that led to Angela's appointment as a research student to to look after um, this particular question. Um, Julia and Carol came, from, came to us from, from the health faculty. Um, she's looking at the connection between the design of the um, urban environment and the impact it has on the health and well-being of um, those residents. Um, do they jog more often? Do they um, make use of the um, yoga and, and other health kind of um, offerings that are um, rolled out by the um, community development um, agency? And um, Nicole is, um, her background is urban archaeology, which is quite interesting. Um, in another life, she actually looked at medieval cities and firewalls, the kind of non-technical firewalls, the, the real kind of bricks and firewalls, and um, how they, in some cases, were created around cities without any sort of threat from the outside. They were more created to keep people on the inside and to generate a feeling of being on the inside, to be part of the city. So if you're inside the firewall, you're part of the city. If you're outside the firewall, you're an enemy or you're not part of the city. And so now we are seeking to, to translate some of these findings and apply them to what has been done in terms of the design interventions at the Calvin Grove Urban Village, where similar kind of um, design aspects are being rolled out to uh, make sure that people have this kind of sense of belonging. A, um, it's, um, it's a kind of place-making exercise. Um, we've conducted workshops with some of the residents. Um, this one here is called History Lines, where we asked um, people um, where they've lived before. The, um, the background to this is that before people were able to move into the Kelvin Grove Urban Village, Helen and others were researching the history of the place. Now that that's been completed and people are moving in, we are focusing on the history of the people, of where they, they came from. And this little application is using Google Maps to pinpoint the um, pathways of where people have lived in their life. And it then overlays those lines and it shows you, um, well, the overlaps and the intersections. And um, people are able to augment this map with um, narratives, with, with little stories about where they've been. And we're using this at the moment as an icebreaker to enable people to say, oh, you've been in Sydney as well, or you've been to Germany or whatever, um, and um, enable um, discussion and enable interaction between residents. Um, so after the workshop is completed, we, we put this up on the screen and we um, allow people to explore the map that they've created in, in the workshop. So it's a very much, um, there's, there's a result, a tangible result basically straight away after we conduct these workshops and they've been quite, quite popular. Um, CityFlox is this uh, prototype that Mark's been developing. Um, it um, uses concepts of social navigation in order to help um, new residents as well as visitors to find their way around the city. Um, in this case, it is, um, the research question here is whether direct or indirect social navigation is better suited um, for different purposes. Direct social navigation would actually be, sorry, to, to ask someone directly, like, you know, I'm hungry, where do I go? Where's a nice place for me to eat? Uh, indirect social navigation, you enter it into the system and you get a pre-recorded or pre-stored list of recommendations. Um, so the system allows you to do both. You can either connect to expert residents who have volunteered to provide advice, or you can retrieve information that has been stored by those people in, in a database. And we are at the moment evaluating um, how people go about navigating um, unknown urban terrain. And finally, Swarm is a prototype which has been patented by Christine Satchel. It's a, um, an avatar-based instant messaging application, if you like, that runs on your mobile phone. It's supposed to um, improve um, awareness of what your 
um, what the other members of your social circle, of your social network are up to. Can you call them right now? Maybe they're in a presentation, in a meeting, or maybe they're available. Um, maybe they're close by. Maybe you're hanging out at Federation Square in Melbourne or at High Street in Oxford, and you don't actually know who, is, who else is around you. Maybe you don't want people to know that you are there. So this is a tool that gives you full control of those kind of indices. You can actually set it so that your, work, uh, your boss will think you're still at work working on a report, whereas your friends know that you're actually on a date. Um, so um, the challenge there is to provide an interface that allows you to do this quite easily, because if, you, if you're stuck trying to figure it out for 10 minutes, then it defeats the whole purpose. So um, Christine is working on this, and um, there's a prototype, a flash prototype available that you can play with at this website, smartinternet.com.au forward slash swarm.